Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. We'll wait for another one minute. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, I hope I can hear. Everyone can hear me, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, how are you all? Fine, ma'am. How are you? I'm fine. fine. Everyone has to open their video. Everyone has to keep their camera on. Throughout the class. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, everyone had... I hope everyone had did your homework. Completed? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma everyone, those who those didn't do yes, it. Those who didn't do. Charvik, did you do your homework? Okay. Sritej, did you do? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Adrit Rao did. Okay. Saumya? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Fine. Any doubts in the homework? No. Nobody? No, ma'am. I hope everyone can see my screen, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, can anyone tell me what, where did we stop in the last class? Anyone? Ma'am, you just stop with the, um, the new, you just stop with the, uh, like you gave one uh, slide, like about nutrients and, uh, what are the types of nutrients you give that slide? Okay. Anyone else? Ma'am, like uh, you gave the homework, uh, which nutrients does the plant like? There we start. Okay. 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 Fine. So today we will continue the topic nutrition in the plants. So today's, today we will see what are cells and uh, about more, a little more about chlorophyll. And then we'll see about ultimate source of energy. What is the ultimate source of energy for plants? Okay. This we will see. And you will have your homeworks at the last. So uh, first we will see what are cells. Okay. What are cells? 
do you uh, do you guys know what are cells plant cell cells mean plant cells Ma'am, ma ma cells are tiny uh, units that um, that help to make up a living organism, or uh, it is hence um, they are also called as building blocks of an uh, organism. Very good, very good. So in plants, we have cells. Human beings are made up of cells. And uh, I I hope you all know uh, multicellular and unicellular, right? What is multicellular and what is mean by unicellular? Yes, ma'am. Yes, so plants, so can you guess plants are multicellular or unicellular? Multicellular. Multicellular. They are multicellular. They are macroscopic organisms. You can yes. see them in your naked eye, right? So unicellular or single cell, you cannot see them in your naked eye. They are microscopic organisms. So plants are macroscopic organisms they are multicellular organisms so they do also have um, cell membrane so these things can come in your exams cell membrane they also have nucleus they also do functions inside the cell everything will happen as like human only okay plants also possess cells cell membrane cell uh, membranes and uh, organs inside cells Cell components, cellular organ organs, you can say, or cellular components, you can say, they also have. Okay. At end of this class, I'll show you the the particular passage that is in your uh, in CRT book. Okay. We'll see that, and we'll see uh, like they also have cell membrane. Everything I told. Next, we will see about chlorophyll. So I la in last class only we discussed about chlorophyll. Many of you know. I uh, I think you guys know what are chlorophyll, right? That chlorophyll is a green pigment and chlorophyll is not only present in the leaves, they are also present in the stem. If the plant is in a shrub or herb size, they are present in the present in the stem also. Right? So the leaves have a green pigment called chlorophyll. And this chlorophyll is going to help you to capture uh, the sunlight from the sun and do the preparation. That is, they prepare the food, right? They need energy for that. So leaves are nothing but <coughs> Why leaves are called as food factories? Because they have chlorophyll. And one more thing, everyone uh, take your notebook and pen. Do write the notes when the class is going on. Okay? I hope you guys got the message right in the group. I had told you upcoming your Sunday examinations, you will have questions from class notes as well as from the activities that we are doing every day. Okay? We will surely have. So today we will be having somewhat theory part that is uh, mainly that will be coming to your examination part. Activities won't be there. I'll tell you, but won't be there. Okay. So leaves are a green pigment called chlorophyll. They helps to capture the energy of the sunlight. And this energy is used to synthesize. As I told you, photosynthesis, the word itself, have photo plus synthesis. Synthesis means to prepare. To uh, Here they have given in the bracket, right? To prepare to combine food. So they are uh, preparing the food from the carbon dioxide and the water. Since the synthesis of food occur in the presence of sunlight. So somebody asked me, it is possible, whether is it possible uh, in the absence of sunlight in the presence of torchlight? It is, it is not possible, okay? As I told you the reason in the last class itself. So presence of sunlight, this is called photosynthesis. So if they ask you, they can ask you any question about chlorophyll. Like they can ask you, chlorophyll is present in the which part of the plant? Stem, root, leaves, like that. So you have to answer it is present in stem. In some cases, see, if I ask you whether the chlorophyll is present in the stem of a tree, you won't say yes, right? Stem of the tree doesn't have chlorophyll. Because as the plant grows bigger and bigger, their stem will get hardened so that they won't have chlorophyll. Only leaves will have chlorophyll. So you have to remember these things. Mama. And that's but why uh, like small plants have stems green color. What? What? Anyone? Because of the because of the presence of chlorophyll in the stems, that's mm -hmm. why like uh, small plants have green color stems. Yes, sure. Yes, correct. Correct. And not only Mom, the plants. also herbs and mm -hmm. herbs and shrubs also have that uh, uh, creepers and climbers also have Very chlorophyll good. in the stem yes. right? Yes, yes, yes. If it is a green in color, surely it have chlorophyll. 
okay so you will have you will get a question in this class so that will be answered by you in the next class that will be homework okay so whatever it is in the green color in the plant case i'm telling you wherever you see the green color presence of chlorophyll is there because of chlorophyll only you have green and they are in green in color okay this is for sure okay next so which is the ultimate source of energy this is very very important one marks or two marks they can ask you which, which is the ultimate source of energy sun is the ultimate source of energy not only for plants for every living organisms i hope in the last class i asked you guys to find out right if um, oxygen is okay i think it's not your class sorry which is the ultimate source of energy sun is the ultimate source of energy for all living organisms without sun we cannot survive so now in your homework part you can add this also today go to your home i mean uh, you have to in the home activities you need to do after this class you need to find out if sun is not there what are all the things we will face if sun is not there whether earth can survive or not what are all the importance of sun at least five points okay so if i ask you now you will say madam ma'am light won't be there without sun there will be only dark but these are normal points but i need you guys to find out scientific points if sun is not there what will happen to the earth to the living organisms okay so which is the ultimate source of energy sun is the ultimate source of energy not only for plants but all the living organisms in this chapter for plants it is very very important that sun is should be there sunlight should be there ma'am yeah ma'am i going to send this uh, like slide presentation in the why is that? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, I had a doubt. Do you guys receive your uh, resources for last class? Yes, ma'am. You guys? Yes, ma'am. You got right? Yes. yes. Okay. okay, fine. Uh, I will upload it. I will upload each and everything. Whatever okay. I share with you. You guys all okay. have NCRT books, right? Those who don't have, if you guys want, I will upload the soft copy. You guys want? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Should I upload NCRT book? Yes. Okay, today I'll upload. So, okay, so this is what I asked you guys to note it down. Can you imagine life on Earth in the absence of photosynthesis? That I, uh, before we discussed, can you imagine this life on Earth without the sunlight or sun? And now I want you all to answer this question now. Saumya, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, can you answer this question? Can you imagine life on Earth in absence of photosynthesis? I, I'm not really sure. No, okay, think. If it is no or s, you have to give the reason. Um, if there's no photosynthesis, mm -hmm. it, um, if there's no photosynthesis in plants, then there won't be even there won't be any plants okay there won't there won't be any plants without water very good that is very good if there is no plants then what will happen uh we need plants for our living so mm -hmm. um, we won't be on earth also very good okay this is kind of food related question like Saumya has given me a glimpse like if there is no photosynthesis human beings cannot survive because we don't get food because we are primarily dependent on plants for our food. This is one point. Another point. Anyone else can tell me another point? Ma'am can I? Yes sure. Uh, Ma'am uh, uh, life without uh, photosynthesis is not possible in earth because mm -hmm. While doing the photosynthesis, plants release oxygen that is Very needed good. by your body for mm -hmm. respiration and all the things. So, uh, if no photosynthesis, then no no oxygen. If no, if and then if no oxygen, no living things can survive here. Very nice. So primary thing because of photosynthesis, we are largely benefited only because they release oxygen. Right, that is very important point because as Samya told, uh, you know, you think, you imagine world uh, after 25 plus years, after 25 plus years, people will consume medicine only. One, one tablet is enough for one day. That will have all the energy that you needed for one day. Do you guys, uh, can you guys imagine that? Yes, right? Yes. In future, world will be that much technologically, it will become advanced so that we don't need food. 
scientist will say take one tablet you will be full that's it so that situation will come without without plans for yeah food is yeah we can survive because because of the advanced technology but without oxygen we cannot survive right so oxygen is the first and main point are you all taking uh, notes right yes sir yeah hamza did you join 5 minutes late no ma'am 3 uh, minutes late okay fine did, uh, are you understanding yes ma'am okay can you tell me the answer can you imagine life on earth in the absence of photosynthesis ma'am if there is no photosynthesis there will be no existence of plants and uh, the human beings and all living things cannot breathe and they uh, and they will just uh, and they won't exist okay ashwin kumar why your video is off and gelda gelda why your video is off yeah video hmm? not should turn on video that is compulsory okay next slide so besides leaves as i told you in the starting of the class besides leaves photosynthesis also takes place in other green parts of the plant yes they take place but as i told you leaves are the food factories okay 99% of the photosynthesis takes place only in the leaves but as stem of sherbs and herbs are having chlorophyll as well they also take part very one very 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 less person only one person you can say in the green stems and green branches as i told you they have mentioned it green stems and green branches only the de, uh, they also take part in photosynthesis but very very less amount 1% only okay but do you guys have ever thought like you guys know desert plants right so desert plants yes. are not like normal plants cactus you've seen cactus they will they will not have leaves they will have thorns on them right why do they have thorns why do they have thorns Want to reduce the uh, water loss due to transpiration. Okay, why do they want to reduce the water loss due to transpiration? Why? Why? Ma'am, be yeah. because ma'am, because uh, they in the ma'am, they're mostly in like uh, hot deserts. Okay, hot deserts. Okay, so hot deserts means means what? Ma'am, I have a doubt actually. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, ma'am, you uh, you said that in. Besides leaves, photosynthesis can mm -hmm. also take in place in other parts of the plant. Like only. very, very one percent, minute percent. Yeah. Yeah, ma'am. So, uh, the main thing, like not the main thing, the mm -hmm. one more important thing for the like for doing the photosynthesis, uh, uh carbon dioxide for the plants. So, mm -hmm. for the carbon dioxide to go inside the leaf, we have stomata or similar stomata. called stoma. So. Stoma not present in the stems right how can they we do have pores in the stems that will be microscopic one you can't see that wait i hope you can see the screen right see can you see huh? the stems the small pores on the surface of the stems and roots roots also have stems also have they are called lenticles okay this is out of your syllabus actually but as you have asked me i want i was like very curious to say you guys like yeah it is there stem also have okay. pores okay they also have pores that is called lenticles the technical word is lenticles through which they also do but that is not important as i told you they contribute only 1% in the photosynthesis that is highly negligible it you can neglect that no need okay Okay. So desert plants have scales or spine-like leaves to reduce the water loss by transpiration because desert don't have water, right? Desert don't have water. Only camel can survive in desert because they yes. are having that ability to withstand without water for long hours, right? So that is why cam we use camels in the desert, right? They they have a special ability to store water in their stomach pouch. You know that right? Inside the stomach, they have a yes. the special ability to store water, so that whenever they need water, they can take from the stomach to the mouth. They have that ability. Okay, so that is that is why camels are used in the desert. Ma'am, I have a doubt. Yeah. Ma'am, do we have any other use of like uh, chlorophyll other than photosynthesis? chlorophyll are mainly helpful in the photosynthesis only okay other things 
I, I I'll give you as a homework. You can you can go and search like what are the other uses of chlorophyll. They contribute green pigment to the plant. That looks nice, right? Yeah. Greenish color, green lush green color. They contribute color. And you know if we, if I want to talk about other uses of chlorophyll other than plants nutrients, other than contributing to plants photosynthesis, we are getting green color dye from the plant leaves, right? Yes. From plant leaves, you can take green color dye. You are getting the color green from like you can also get not only from the plants, you can also get from plants the green color. They are used for dye. So I told you one use. So you go home, you can add this point in your home, but you can go home and search what are the other uses of chlorophyll. Right? Uh, but they okay. are 99% used for this. If you talk about plant nutrition, this topic, like subject to this topic, then you can say, yeah, they are useful, highly useful for photosynthesis. Okay? You yes. go home, you do as this, your, uh, you can take this as a homework and find what are the other uses of chlorophyll. I told you one hey, is for taking dyes. You find the rest. Okay? Mom, can you repeat the homework again? The homework is to go uh, after this class, go to internet and go and ask your parents what are the other uses of chlorophyll. Okay. Okay. So give some examples. This thorn, uh, spine-like leaves, plants, those... Uh, Give some examples, plant names, those who have scales or spine-like leaves. Ma'am, cactus. Ma'am, cactus, aloe vera, rose. Rose. Okay, rose. Rose Rose is not a desert plant, right? Is rose a desert plant? Uh. What? Is rose a desert plant? No. Then why do they have thorns? Rose have thorns. You guys know that, right? Yes. Mm, so why do they have thorns? Mm, I'm basically... I think plants of uh, those rose plants have uh, found to deter herbivores animals like that eat plants and uh, the to basically thorns in the rose act as a protection for itself. There is no use specific use for uh, thorns in the rose. The rose plants have thorns on them to protect them. They act as a shield for them. So so that because not only for herbivores for other things for everything they protect themselves to save them like they protect themselves from herbivorous plants so then and they use uh, for like protection yes only words for protection for self-defense you can use this word self-defense rose plants have thorns on them for self-defense okay it's a very good question nice you should think like this okay next so what is tomato everyone knows like uh, everyone uh, last class only we spoke about tomato so this picture clearly tells you more about stomata. See, you have a layer, right? You have this here. This is called, this is actually the plant, plant cell. This is the macroscopic view of plant cell. And you can see, right, chlorophylls are there. Chlorophyll is there here. The green, green patches are called chlorophyll. Okay, these, these are chlorophyll. And the small, small... Uh, like pores kind of structure you can see that is stomata these are this green color patch or chlorophyll and this tomato stomata is nothing but they are present on the leaves okay they are present on the leaves small pores which are used to exchange gases are what what i can't hear you are not clear tiny pores which are which are used to exchange gases are called stomata Okay, you're telling the definition of stomata. Yes. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, that is correct. They are small pores. They help in breathing. So generally, if you say we are breathing through the nose, plants breathe through their stomata. Okay, stomata helps in breathing. Okay, they, they are the small pores. Mom also exchanging gas. What, what? Mom also exchanging gases. 
uh, dear can you chat like can you put in chat because your voice is not clear yeah that is right uh, you have lot more than that for transpiration also stomata they uh, they are used but in the transpiration process stomata are great, greatly they are used but you you also have uh, uses for stomata okay if you go and if you read in this chapter only we'll get about transpiration then we read more about transpiration i explain okay i'll explain about more uses of stomata okay yeah that is main exchanging of gas uh, getting the sunlight getting the energy source directly from the sun exchanging of gas transpiration everything they are that is why i last homework is like wrap the leaf in the plastic cover and see i hope you all would have uh, noticed uh, water in the yes, plastic cover. water yes, no. yes, water yes, why yes. it's because of stomata okay the leaves have pores so that they did transpiration overnight they do transpiration that is why while uh, evaporation while evaporation you have covered the leaves so evaporation won't take place so instead of evaporating the water will get sedimented in the plastic cover yes. that is why you could see the water droplets yes right sir. so stomata stomata is the one behind that right so yes exchanging gas these are all important points you should know and uh, close this this diagram i think it's good see the leaf uh, the, from the leaf, the uh, uh, image A, you can see the leaf. The microscopic form is, they have stomata. Every leaf has stomata. So stoma, you can see stoma. And you have something called stomatal opening, right? Stomatal opening. Stomatal opening is nothing but the hole. The hole from where the exchange of gases, the sunlight. Ma yeah. Ma just like humans have nose and nostrils. Exactly. From, from exactly. the stomata is the outer part. Stomata is, that is what I'm about to say. Stomata is the part and they are outlet or they are outlined by guard cells. Okay. They, oh. they, you, can um, you see in this image, you have guard cells. Yes. Ma'am, I have one more doubt that yeah. uh, in the stomata, mm -hmm. uh, like, they take in carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in the air, in the present air that uh, every in the that is around us mm -hmm. how do they uh, get or how do they filter it or uh, this is carbon dioxide this is oxygen this is nitrogen and this is here uh, helium hydrogen whatever yeah uh, very good how do they question. get to know very good question we are going to see that in this class wait okay i'll tell you how do they do that guess another creature Okay, I, I hope everyone is clear. This is just a basic diagram. One more important point you all have to note in this diagram is this diagram. You need to know how to draw this diagram and label the parts. Okay? So, everyone, this is present in your NCRT book or you can take the notes. You can take the Ma'am, which one? Ma'am, all this, these three diagrams are A. Or yes, this, full, this first one, this diagram is important. The cell part cell. Uh, sorry, the plant cell part. This one is important and they may ask you to draw this diagram stoma and stomatal opening and you have to label guard cells. This three B and C is important. You have to know how to draw label parts, everything you have to know. So next I'll show you later. I'll, I'll post in the group. No, sorry. I'll post in the wise app. You can take from that. Guess another creature which is green in color other than plants. Ma'am, it is... Uh... I don't know how to pronounce. Can I send it in the chart? I'm okay. iguana. What? Iguana. Frog. Frog. Okay. Frog. Okay. Snake also. Some snakes are green in color, right? Mom is the snakes also on planet. Some birds are also green. Some birds are green. Okay, fine. Yeah. I'm iguana. Okay, okay, okay. Now I'll ask the question like this. What are the creatures that are autotrophic and green in color? I'm zooplankton. Zooplankton. Okay. I don't know about that. Hmm. Ma'am, sea anemones. Sea anemones are autotrophic? Uh, yeah, I think so. Are they green in color? Yes, ma'am. Mama, few fish. Do they? 
grass grass is not but a... grass comes under plants right i have given you other yeah. than plants uh, okay. mm. I'm not able to question. I'm saying about uh, that other process. What? What? I can't hear you. I'm not able to uh, this question. I'm telling about other process. Is grass other process? The plant that creature should be autotrophic. That is, they should also they should be capable of doing photosynthesis. They should do the photosynthesis and prepare their own food. And sea animals, Siddhanta. Sea animals are animals. They are not plants. Yeah, my mind. And they are not yeah. autotrophic. They are heterotrophic. They are animals. Yeah, ma'am. They are animals. But how do they... Uh, like, how are they heterotrophic? They, are, they have green color, right? No, they are not in green color. No. Okay, ma'am. They are, are complete are animals. It should plants. be other than plants, yeah. Okay. Hmm? And grasshoppers? Grasshoppers are uh, not autotrophic. Algae. Uh, you guys, uh, you don't know algae. You all don't know. Mama and mama, I'm like, uh, I learned it in fifth class. Um, yes, algae doesn't come under plant. Okay, algae is answer. Other than algae, like uh, maybe there, but basic creature is algae. Mama thought algae comes under like plant. They do, okay. Yeah, that, that is what. They don't come under plants. Algae, you can say they are protists. Protists, you can say, but that is not in your syllabus. But you can say they are protists or you can simply say they are uh, eukaryotic organisms. That's it. They don't come under plants. They don't come under animals. They don't come under any, any category. They um, are uh, simply... Plant yeah. And can be uh, I can't hear you. are not clear. No, uh, no, I can hear you in our chat. Can anyone hear Charvi clearly? No, ma. All right. Voice is not clear. You, you <coughs> chat. I'll see the chat. Good message. Phytoplankton. Okay, phytoplankton. Why phytoplankton came here? Why phytoplankton? Yeah, phytoplankton is a kind of algae. You can say phytoplankton. Yeah, they are all. Sorry. Yeah, phytoplankton are also algae. Phytoplankton is called as, they are, you can say them as a marine algae. They are present in the marine, they are a large ocean. They are, you can say they are microscopic and as well as, you, you saw normal algae uh, near your home where there is an over water, like water stagnant. Yes, there you can say uh, green color patches, right? Yes, yes, those are algae. Those are algae. But this yes. phytoplankton, it is microscopic. You cannot see them, and they are marine algae. They are present in underwater. I mean, underwater in the sense marine. They are in present in no, the I sea. Mean, I saw it somewhere in a textbook. Yeah, yeah, that is fine. Totally fine. So that you came to know, right? Phytoplankton. You, everyone can, uh, like everyone, you can uh, remember this or you can know. Phytoplanktons are nothing but microscopic algae. They are present underwater. They are they are by by definition itself they are marine algae, but they do come under algae only. Okay, but they are not normal algae. They are not macroscopic. They are not multicellular. Okay, so many things are there. Phyto, we'll come to that when your chap. If you have any chapter on algae, we'll come to that. For now, simply another creature which is green in color and also they are also uh, what they can also prepare their own food. They can do photosynthesis. They are algae, okay. And but in algae, like where does the photosynthesis take place? Like plants have leaves. Yeah, very good. In uh, in algae also, they are having chlorophyll. They are having cells. So cell have cell membrane, cellular organ, uh, cellular organs. Mom, algae takes is... place there. Mom, algae is which type of cell? Multicellular. As I told you, normally algae that you are seeing around your home, green and green color patches, they are multicellular. That's why I said there is a term called group carrier. I, I'll type here so that you know. Eukaryotic. 
they are eukaryotic organism they are simply they don't come under plants they are eukaryotic organisms okay eukaryote mean they do have mam mam algae and fungus uh, like they together they form this symbiotic uh, association right yes <laughs> yes that is out of topic we'll discuss when we come to fungi we'll discuss about that. algae fungi how they utilize each other Fung uh, how algae can produce food and fungi helps algae for location that for location algae helps fungi because they have chlorophyll they produce food they help vice versa symbiosis means each other they help fungi have some uses from algae algae have some uh, uses from fungi so that is a big chapter we'll, we'll discuss mam like trading barter system you guys know what is barter system yes yes kind of yes we'll we'll discuss about that later that is interesting not only algae and fungi we have lot of creatures like that by lot of uh, plants we have lot we'll, we'll see with examples for now no, let's no wrap this no okay any more doubts we'll no, have no. it in the end of the lecture okay now we'll complete the lecture next is very important part okay as far as your uh, school concern or your test in chanakya for everywhere it's very important synthesis of plant food other than carbohydrates so before going to this topic for our human body we require oxygen for breathing and we are uh, taking in food why why we take in food we need energy so from energy so from food we are getting lot uh, varieties of energy not only minerals not only vitamins we we get we will get from food we'll get vitamins from food we are getting minerals from food we are getting carbohydrates uh, fat whatever we require we we are getting everything minerals right from different kinds of food we are we are getting different kind of energy we are getting different kind of vitamin vitamin minerals everything what about plants as far as now like till now whatever we saw plants do photosynthesis with the help of carbon dioxide uh, they do photosynthesis this is what we saw after photosynthesis what is actually happening how they are getting whatever nutrients they want plants also need nutrients plants also need vitamins plants also need minerals they also need everything but after the end of photosynthesis i i hope you guys remember that equation photosynthesis equation i have shown you in the last class right with the help of carbon dioxide and in the presence of sunlight and water uh, they are releasing c6h2o6 glucose guys remember it mam c6h2o6 glucose on the starch yes gluc oh, no no glucose is not starch no mam when glucose is stored in the plant it is called starch right yeah they are stored as starch or you can say carbohydrates are nothing but starch okay okay yeah so um, they after this they are getting carbon dioxide uh, like they are releasing oxygen they need carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide like carbon dioxide carbohydrates the primary after the conversion of sunlight energy and everything into glucose that is energy they store the glucose as someone said they store it as carbohydrates or they store it as starch this point is very important they store it as starch it is there in the slide plants synthesizes carbohydrates through the process of photosynthesis this carbohydrates is stored as starch inside the plant you have to remember this point they are stored as starch and this carbohydrates has carbon hydrogen oxygen carbo is carbon hydrates hydrates are nothing but they ha they have hydrogen and oxygen okay oxygen they get from the atmosphere right so carbon hydrogen oxygen these three are there after photosynthesis plants are getting carbohydrates so carbohydrates basically have carbon hydrogen oxygen from this carbon hydrogen oxygen how do they get all other nutrients so that is one more nutrient that is nitrogen like proteins in the slide is there proteins are nitrogenous substance for example plants need proteins 
So how do they get proteins? At the end product, we have only carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. How do they get protein? Proteins are basically nitrogenous substances. Okay, which contain nitrogen. So from Mama, nitrogen, nitrogen is present in the soil. Soil. No, they are not present in the soil. Ma'am, nitrogen is present in the soil. Nitrogen may be present in the soil, but primarily nitrogen is not present in the soil. Yes, Mom, you so you're saying like any plant which uh, produces proteinous food have nitrogenous substances which turn into proteins? Uh, no, no, I can't get you what. Mom, like um plants which produce pro protein foods, so mm -hmm. they contain nitrogenous substances. No, no, to produce protein itself, you need nitrogen, right? Okay. So, 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 yeah, that is what I'm saying. So carbon, hydrogen, oxygen is there. You have to get protein. So, where do you get protein? With the help of nitrogen, you get protein. Because proteins are made up of nitrogen. That is nitrogenous substances, you should say. And protein is something you can consume. But nitrogen is something airy substance. Gas. They are gas. So, our atmosphere has 78% of nitrogen. You all know that. Do you all know that? Yes, ma'am. Composition of plants. Yes. Yes. Plants. Yes. Primary source of plants for nitrogen is air. That is our atmosphere. So from atmosphere, they have to take the nitrogen. Ma'am, using stomata only like they take uh, for nitrogen. Yeah, yeah. Now coming to that question, somebody asked me, they how they can directly take the gases from the atmosphere. Somebody asked me. Directly, they how they can take the gases and how they can uh, take carbon dioxide from that because gas is oh, sorry, atmosphere is a mixture of gases, right? So, how can the plant take only carbon dioxide, only nitrogen? So, that question will be answered now. So, we have this is very important we have something called special kind of bacteria, nitrogenous bacteria, you can say, nitrogenous <laughs> bacteria. Those are present in soil. Okay, let me write because these things are important. Mom, when plants keep consuming nitrogen from the atmosphere, mm -hmm. like does the uh, all the like does the amount of the nitrogen in the atmosphere uh, becomes less? And no, they, we have seventy eight percent of nitrogen. Mom, but it doesn't decrease because plants keep consuming it. No, plants keep consuming, but nitrogen, we are not, plants are not only consuming nitrogen. We are uh, also there, like when plant gets decomposed, they release nitrogen again. Do you know that process? Yes, ma'am, I heard it. Uh, yeah. I heard about it somewhere. As a manure, right? They they release nitrogen. Yes. So like that, that is why there is something called atmospheric cycle that should be balanced and maintained. That is called nature, not only nitrogen, you know, oxygen also, carbon dioxide also. Nowadays, human beings, they cut down trees, they cut down trees and they utilize the land, agriculture lands and all. And number of trees are getting reduced. Yes. So that is not good for atmosphere, right? Okay. So it's human beings' duty to take care of that atmospheric Earth cycle. Okay, that is human beings' duty. You all should plant at least 10, 15 trees in your lifetime before you die. Everyone, every every human being should do that. Okay? okay. So that is called some there is something called atmospheric cycle. Nitro we have something called nitrogen cycle, how nitrogen gets uh, back again uh, to the atmosphere. And as far as nitrogen can concern, we have 78% in the atmosphere. So no problem about that. Okay. Yes. So now uh, notice they are something called nitrogenous bacteria. They help in fixing the N2 from atmosphere to soil. Remember, there are something called nitrogenous bacteria. They help in fixing the atmospheric nitrogen to soil. 
so as someone asked me from nitrogen sorry from atmosphere they can't directly take the gases bacteria should support bacteria are present in the soil okay bacteria will support they it is their work to convert the atmospheric gases to respective gases like if in this example we have something called nitrogenous bacteria what do they do they take the nitrogen from the atmosphere they fix in the soil they fix in the soil they they convert that and they fix in the soil and from soil we have roots right yes. roots will transport the required nitrogen to plants in to all the parts of the plants okay clear everyone so yes yes sir you can more to know we don't have time our time is over there is more to know like uh, xylem and phloem in last class somebody asked me xylem and phloem what are those things right so i just gave you basic xylem is for transporting water smell phloem is to transport other things so here i got you the clear picture what is xylem what is phloem xylem transport water and minerals transport food and sugar that is phloem sitting now i can't explain you you go after this class Uh, you have to go and open the resources and you can see these things. I will upload the PPT. And if you guys have any doubt, in the next class we'll discuss more about xylem and phloem. Okay? Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, you can go through this slide. Okay? Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, what is the homework? I'll come to that. Find and come in the next class. Some plants with so some plants will be. With deep red, violet, or brown leaves, have you all noticed those kind of plants? Yes, ma'am. Many times. Many times we see. So how? Ma'am, like you... sometimes when we go to restaurants or like they keep it for show. So yeah. So how do they do the photosynthesis? Main thing for photosynthesis is chlorophyll. Those chlorophyll are not present in the those plants. They have brown, red, violet leaves. So how do they do that? And then how do they like make photosynthesis? Yeah, that is your homework <laughs> that you have to find out. If you don't know, I'll tell in next class. Okay. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma the next is find out difference between algae and plants. Today we discussed about algae. I told you. Do you remember? I told you. I I hope you all remember. Algae. They are. They are, don't come under plants. Yeah. They do have chlorophyll. They are multicellular, but still they don't come under plants. Why? that you all should find out in the next class why they don't come under plants i mean uh, they don't come under plants like they are not plants and if not they are not if not then what are they called and what are the differences between algae and plants?